On this week's episode of Fishing the Dream, we head out with the boys from BLA, boating, lifestyle, adventure. And that's what fishing truly is as we head up the skinny end of Brisbane River to escape the city life. Impressed with my fishing skills, Tim Morgan joins us again, along with Roderick Wellmsley, skipper of Are You For Real, and Lizzie McCauley, the kayak specialist. We have a look at what Old Town and Ocean Kayaks have to offer and use the fishing buddy to help locate the fish. If you haven't experienced the magic of Southeast Queensland, come with Nigel and I as we go fishing the dream with BLA. G'day and welcome to this week's episode of Fishing the Dream. I'm here with Roderick and Tim from BLA. Boys, what are we fishing for today? Basic target species here, the upper reaches of the river is going to be yellow belly and, um, and obviously Australian bass. A um, couple of different techniques to be using today. Basically uh, jerk baiting with hard bodies. Uh, probably do a bit of slow rolling of spinner baits and, um, and maybe you know, mixing up with a bit of plastics. And uh, man, we'll see how we go. Tim knows the river pretty well. I knew some of his hummingbird sounders. Yeah. Like the kayaks these days, you know, it's not just getting the kayak on the water and going. You've got sounders, you've got electric motors, which makes the the experience uh, a, a lot more fun for me on the water. But you know, we'll probably start off targeting the edges, but always have that sounder on and look at it because even in the river like this, just like the dams, you can find schools of fish, catch them mid water. So uh, fingers crossed, we'll get a few today. Excellent. What sort of techniques are we going to throw out there today? We'll start off by probably throwing it at the bank while we're just we're just going along, but like having the boat towards the, the centre of the river, always keeping an eye on, on the sounder, but you know, throwing crankbaits, suspending jerk baits at those snags that you can see. But then if we find, you know, fish on the on the sounder, slow rolling spinner baits through them, plastics and, and even the suspending jerk baits because it's not too deep. Excellent. Well before we do that, let's pop over to Wilson and see what rods we need for kayak fishing. No your rod. Hey Cord, how are you? Good Fraser, how are you? Excellent. Alright, so we're kayak fishing. Kayak fishing today. Alright, have I got the rod for you? Awesome. Alright Fraser, so you're kayak fishing? Kayak fishing at, right. the Wyvenha, at the skinny end of Wyvenhoe. Alright, yeah, nice yep. bit of country up there. Absolutely. Now look, kayak fishing is very specific, so you're after, obviously after a rod for this. Yep. You're using spinning reels? Ah, uh, yes we are. Okay, this whole theme of it, we choose a rod, we've got to decide what reel we're using, and then there's an appropriate rod for that reel, and that's either a thread line or an overhead, because they're two you know, technically different rods. But once we decide it's a spinning rod, we'll then go from there and look at all the attributes you need to have the best day you can on the water with your kayak fishing. Okay, so number one, kayak fishing, you're close to the water you're restricted from space. Seems like a horrible thing, but it really is quite nice. But we need specialised rods to actually catch those fish and make the day the easiest we can on ourselves. Number one thing with a kayak, you don't want to fall in the water. So the rod has to be shorter than a natural rod. Now, as you know, the leverage factor, once you start getting over six feet in rods, starts pulling you over. And you don't want that in a kayak because you don't want to be fighting that all the time, give you a bad back and just make your day terrible. So. Kayak rod number one needs to be six feet and under. I would say four foot six to six feet would be the best. And then we need to look at some other areas of the rod to make it, you know, better to use for that sort of form of fishing. It has to be light. So two things, EVA butt, we spoke about that. Yep. EVA is lighter, that's the black soft foam material. Not too long, okay, because it's important that whole leverage thing with the kayak that we spoke about, we don't want to get pulled over and if that butt's really long, the reel's pulling from up here on the rod, yeah. it'll drag us over and make our day uncomfortable. And two, it just generally gets in the way because our manoeuvrability is so much less in the kayak. All right, next thing is your lure fishing, is that correct? Uh, yes, we are. Okay, so your lure fishing, so we need the carbon blank, we've spoken about this. You know, it is the ultimate thing for fishing lures. It's very stiff, it puts all the action out of your hand into that lure gets you more strikes, yeah. lets you set the hooks quicker than a softer rod, so it needs to be a little bit stiff, all right? The rod we've got here is the uh, DAM Athena, you'll see. It is, yet again, quite sort of small and thin through the middle section, yeah. but stiff. If we have a look at that rod, 
it's quite stiff, but it has a nice soft taper, and that's important in a kayak rod. And when I mean taper, I mean how that rod bends through, it bends evenly throughout the rod. Yeah. So yet again, that whole leverage thing, when we hook a fish on this rod, it's gonna bend to down here and not try and pull us out of the kayak. And it's got a short butt, okay? It's got a nice short rear grip. I guess kayak fishing is a minimalist thing, so we need to strip the rod back to the least we can, but has the other factors, and very important this, we don't have a lot of swing on our back cast in the kayak because we're so close to the water. Yeah. So we need, definitely need that stripper guide to be larger than we usually would for a rod of this size. This one's actually five feet long and you'll see it has the same size guide as the seven foot rods we spoke about in yeah. other episodes. And yet again, down to quite a small tip to give us that control. But over that short length, the guides need to strip down very quickly to that small tip. So there we have it. That is the ideal rod for what you're going to do, and I bet you you're going to have a blast. Well, I hope so. I think we're out with the boys from BLA again, so uh, they really know their stuff, so hopefully they can put us on a few fish. Yeah, you're in for a fun day. Excellent. After launching the kayaks, we head downriver. Roderick and Nigel are in the Guide 47. Tim's in the Vapor 10. And Lindsay is in the Scramber 11. We're fishing up the top of the Brizzy River here and at the moment I'm just targeting all these snags along the side. It's a great spot for the bass to hide and, and ambush any, any bait fish coming through. Um, Roderick's fishing on the other side. He's fishing out a little bit wider and he's got the hummingbird fishing buddy on the boat. So, you know, not always will a fish sit right up close to the bank here. Occasionally they school up and chase bait in the middle. So at the moment, we've just got here. I'm targeting the bank, he's targeting a bit deeper. We'll find out where the fish are and hopefully whack a few. So what we're doing, um, using this the electric motor on the canoe, takes a bit of the exercise out, but it um, definitely makes for a more enjoyable day. And I'm just doing a troll up the, the middle of the river in one of the deeper sections. And we're, we're basically making use of, of, of casting at the snags. Nigel's up the front, he's throwing a spinnerbait through those snags. So we're covering, you know, if, we, if there are any active fish in those snags, he'll pick them off with a spinnerbait. And I'm using this Humminbird fishing buddy. It's the 140C, so it's the colour model. Gives really good picture, good definition. So if we do run over a school of fish, we'll actually see those individual fish marking up on the sounder. And, and if we're not sure that they are bass, when my lure runs through them, you know, that'd probably be a really good indication of, of whether they are bass or not. But in this section of the river, if we come across a school patch of fish, they'll be bass or you know, possibly yellow belly, and, um, and we'll get them on the lure. Uh, so, you know, basically just maximizing your, your, your possibilities, especially on a new waterway that you haven't fished before. It gives you a good rundown of, of whether there's snags, the depth of the water, and also, um, you know, you, 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 might be, you might get caught in a certain area and, and think you're in the best part of the river, but this way, we, you know, we're covering a, a fair bit of ground quickly. And, um, and once again, using the sounder to see what's under us and look for fish, and now just casting at those snags. So when you're on a new waterway, make the most of your equipment. Take our way, we'll be right back. Well, I'm here with Lindsay from BLA, the kayak specialist, and he's gonna take us through some of the kayaks we're using today. So the kayaks we've got today for our um, excursion, we've got the Scrambler 11 from Ocean Kayak. Sit inside, we've got the Vapor 10 Angler. Um, in the canoes, we've got a Guide 147 Fish Bomb. Excellent, well, let's have a look at a couple of the specs of these uh, kayaks. So Fraser, this is the Ocean Kayak uh, Scrambler 11, and this is one of the um, boats that are ideal for the kind of waterway we're fishing in today. As you can see on the back here, we've got a really big rear well area. Um, now that'll take all your tackle boxes, take an esky. Um, we've got a soft bag in under here at the moment, but plenty of room for storage. A couple of nice flush mount rod holders, good quality. Um, also very useful features having a paddle holder on the side, so you can lay the paddle on the side of the kayak. Um, our comfort seat has four adjustment points, so really good lumbar support for you know, spending quite a few hours on the water, really important. We've got this unit fitted with a Hummingbird 345, so that helps us show where some of the fish are schooling up. The Scrambler 11. Okay, so this is the other kite we're using today. This is um, the Vapor 10 Angler from Old Town. And this is a great little kayak for skinny water fishing. 
very manoeuvrable, um, nice dry ride inside, got of course a low centre of gravity, comes with a good uh, quality backrest so lots of support which is important. On the back here we've got a nice area uh, to put all your tackle, um, you can also get a hatch for that as well um, if that's so desired. The other good things about here is we've got a, um, a paddle holder up here which just simply allows the, the paddle to rest on here. So when you're fishing, you're able to just put the paddle down, carry on fishing and just holds it nicely there. The Vapor 10 Angler. So one of the canoes we're using today, again from Old Town, is the Guide 147. And look, it's a great uh, canoe for maybe taking a couple of mates out or, or even the kids out for a fish or a day out on the water. Now, as you can see, um, we've got it set up with the Minn Kota motor and mounted on its own bracket. Uh, we've got a battery here for running that, uh, good comfortable seating. In the centre here we've got loads of compartments for fishing, put a few cold cans of drink on there. Um, great for setup, take it away camping, or like we're doing today, good boat for fishing out of. The Guide 147. Now let's get back on the water. So it's gone a bit quiet on the suspending jerk baits now, and the and the boys are over there throwing a jerk bait and a little spinner bait. And the spinner bait they're getting a lot of uh, little taps, which are short strikes, which are probably hitting the blade. So I'm just changing now to a little atomic two and a half inch uh, paddle tail in the smoke yellow core colour. Just a nice little natural colour, looks like little gudgeons and stuff that swim through here. So hopefully uh, the fish are a little bit shut down. A smaller presentation like this might turn those uh, those taps into a bite. What we're doing here is we're trying to, these fish seem a bit tentative on the bite. Obviously there's been, you know, basically the bass season's just opened. There's been a lot of, lot of boats on the water. So these fish might just be a bit gun shy to a lot of your, your popular techniques and, you know, and lure retrieval. So we're trying to use a suspending retrieve here. Suspending lure, we're working the lure down in the water column. It probably gets down to about four or five feet. And then we're just jerking that lure to make a dart from side to side and then just letting it sit there. It just keeps that lure in that fish's face a bit longer and also um, you can get it down there and, and they've got a little bit of time. There you go, and there he is, just like that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good fish. And as you saw there, right on the paws. So, yep, double hook up, there you go. And that's, you know, that's just the absolute beauty of that sounder. If you, if you actually, you, you can actually see those fish on that sounder there. So once you find them, use, you know, mixing up a couple of retrieves and you can get amongst them. With these wild bass, there isn't really any bad ones, are there? Oh, beautiful fish. <laughs> While the boys are reeling him in, Tim hooks up a yeah. monster. Oh, you, you should see the size of the bony brim it just spewed up. <laughs> it was about ha half a kilo. <laughs> Sorry, he's just telling me. <laughs> Want to suspend it, Tim? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is a nice bass. That's why we bring Tim, see? Tim the bass, Morgan. No, I'll come and post your fish, you feel. <laughs> Nice triple hookup. Say cheese. Yeah. That's a nice fish. When he hit that, I did said thought it was an absolute crack of a bass. He's actually, that's what's happened. He's actually pulled the, the hook off. Here's a yellow for you. Oh, you pulled the, pulled the troubles Yeah, he pulled the front, broken the front split ring and it's still there in his nose. That's a monster fish. Pull that out of the snag. Oh, it's coming a bit. It's actually, the, the, the it's been fishing probably a little bit tougher than it normally does and you know, we just keep persevering and and that fish come right out of that tree behind us. Put a big long cast with that little 
suspender right up the back of the tree and it's it's it's, it's worked a really slow retrieve until it got to the outside edge of the trees and then he just hammered that and tried to get back in the sticks and yeah plenty of pressure and and we got, fortunately got him out you could actually feel the leader a couple of little marks on that leader rubbing through the trees you gotta love the wildlife here in Queensland Now it was my turn to jump in with Roderick and he was determined to put me on my first bass. And at last. Looks good, Fraser. This one feels really, really well. We just had a trawl through the middle. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nah, Roderick was on the money again. He said, look, let's have it, let's have a trawl. The sun's a bit hot. And uh, I said they might be under deeper to keep in the cooler water. And spot on, this is a nice looking. Look at that. Nice fish, mate. Just got him hooked. So, what do you do? Just chuck your thumb through the mouth. Just watch those trebles and you can just cradle with the other hand underneath the belly. Just hold the bib of the hook of the lure. Just hold the bib. Yeah, that's the, that's the give you the most purchase. Pick your bail, I'm open. That's it, and then grab him when you got him, hold him tight. That's it, perfect. There we go. Nice fish, Fraser. Well done, mate. Yeah, yeah that's me. Uh, first wild bass. Loved it every minute of it. Just a straight away, you know, a perfect example there. Once again, Fraser was actually asking the question this morning. Hey, Fraser, you know, would it would it be better to be on the water early? And basically, sun will condense those fish into shade or into deeper water. And and there's a fairly deep section of the river here. And I said to him, look, we'll have a troll. We'll use our sound and just see if those fish have moved. And literally, I just said to him, there's a few fish marking up here. And I hooked up, and he hooked up straight after. Yeah, first bass. Yep. <coughs> just uh, slow. Slow rolling the spinner bait across the bottom. They've just marked them up on the hummingbird sounder. Audrey was just explaining. I just had a cast dropped to the bottom and not as big as the ones I was getting earlier. Thick fish too, the bass. Good condition. Very quality river system. We'll be right back. A beautiful part of Brisbane, and I'm on again. Number two, Fraser. Number two for the day. Well done. Look at that, beautiful Brisbane River produces again. Nice fish, let it go. See you later mate, see you next time. Good size, that's why he's pulling so hard. yellow belly just to end the day there. If you want any more information on the kayaks and accessories that we use today, Rod, where do the viewers have to go? Basically BLA's got their own generic website, www.bla.com.au. 
Um, you can get general information on all the boats. They also all have their own individual websites. Ocean Kayak and Old Town have their own websites, which obviously give you a little bit more information and a, and a slightly better description of the product. So if you hop online and have a look on any of those websites, that'll take you straight to it. Well, what an adventure it has been seeing what the South East Queensland has to offer. Started in Moreton Bay with Sean Collin from Moreton Bay Charters, fishing with bait and soft plastics. Duncan from Fishhead put me on my first squid and told us all the ins and outs of squid fishing. For me, it's not all about the fish. I love seeing the thriving marine life and the breathtaking sunrises. Jim from Big Cat showed us all three. Steve from the Tackle Shop Carcidine took us fishing with pro anglers Tristan Taylor and Tim Morgan. Fishing Brizzy and Pine Rivers, showing us all the ins and outs of lure fishing. What an experience fishing off Are You For Real with Scott and Roderick. Where we learn how to throw poppers and the advantage of fishing with downriggers. <laughs> I won't forget this fish. And to finish up, skinny water fishing in Brisbane River with BLA. Having a run on Old Town and Ocean Kayaks, mixing up with some electric motors and some fish finders. If you've missed any of the episodes, here are some highlights. Also, you can view all episodes in full at www.fishingthedream.com.au. And make sure you post your catch up on our Facebook. Until next time, keep on fishing the dream. Hi, I'm Tim Morgan. We're fishing the Brizzy River for bass and yellowbelly for Fishing the Dream. We're filming for that. What do I got to say again? Well, that's all. The... Well, that's all we. All right, so we're kayak fishing, kayak today. fishing today. Have I got a shorter rod for you? Thank you. <laughs> no, I just wanted to do it to you. Let's go. Back. That's going in the tank. <laughs> yeah, mate. So that's your first one on soft plastics down the, down the back there, the crew. Yeah. Yep. Chris, the cameraman. See? Mega. It's not hard. It's not hard at all, is it, mate? Now, yeah. Mr. Funny Man, how come you're not uh, oh, you're not no. real living in, buddy? Oh, no. No. <laughs> we need to find a clownfish. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> so, they're right under you. You can uh, have your day off now. You can. You're, you're finished. <laughs> Very rocky. See what we have to do here on Fish the Dream. What we put up with. <laughs> Beautiful work. <laughs> three inch prongs, so the prawn imitations again. And it's a real talent to get snagged on a sand flat. <laughs> it's a real talent to get it off. Right? Oh. It is a very good talent to get it off. <laughs> Pretty early, I think, because he went up current. Yeah, yeah, it might be a dewy yet. Yeah, he's staying down. Staying Could down. Could be a dewy. This is on the, uh, on the new live fibre rod too. Yeah, she's been a corker, this, this rod. <laughs> oh. oh! As soon as I picked up in there. I was, uh, thought that might happen. <laughs> That's fishing, guys. That's what happens. Unfortunately, probably uh, one of the best fish of the day, too. But he's, uh, I could feel it on the bottom. He's rubbed us on the bottom there, and it's all over. <laughs>